Hi, I'm Jack Dennis. As you can see, I'm on a beautiful trout stream in the desert country of Oregon. The folks at Cabela's have asked me to bring to you a video on how to improve your fly casting. Now you might say, well man, teach us right here. You're on one of the best streams in the world. But it doesn't start on this stream. It really ends on this stream. We're going to start at the basics. The folks at Cabela's wanted me to take you from the start to the finish and give you some ideas on how to improve your fly casting. Some of it's going to be about your equipment and your lines, but it's really going to be about techniques, casting techniques. To learn how to master fly casting, I like to think of this one statement. I want to give it to you and I want you to remember it because if you're having a little bit of trouble, stop and think this over. A fly rod is no more than an extension of your arm. Your energy starts in your body, it flows through your arm, into the rod, into the line, and eventually to your fly. And along the way, problems can occur. But if you remember, this rod is a part of your arm. It's going to help you. Now, we're going to start with the basics, and that's how you start mastering it. Now, a lot of you say, I already know how to cast. Well, let's go back to school. In fact, we're going to go to Idaho Falls, Idaho, to a park there and meet the boys from the Jack Dennis Fly Fishing School. And we're gonna talk over the basics once again. The place to practice is not on the stream. While you'll always be thinking about your casting, and you can certainly work on things while you're fishing, the best place to hone your casting skills is on a lawn, on a pond near your home, but wherever's convenient. Especially coming home from work, take 15 minutes or so and practice. Work on one segment at a time, not try to learn everything all at once. Now while I'm going to teach you a lot in the next few minutes, remember, concentrate on some of the areas you need to work on. Once you master them, then work on to the others. But let's get started. First of all, not being rude, I'm going to put on sunglasses. Now if it's a dark day, just any kind of glass. Even though I don't have a fly on here, I, ha I have a piece of yarn, yeah, and that'll act like a fly. Give me a little weight, let the leader turn over. Don't ever practice with just a fly line. You need to have a leader because you're going to be using that when you're fishing. So wear your glasses, especially any time you have a fly going in the air. Okay, now we're going to get started. I always tell everybody I want to make friends with the fly rod. That it shouldn't be an enemy, although some people want to throw them in the water because I had so much trouble. Getting back to what we said before, it's an extension of your arm, and we're about to work on that aspect. First of all, when we start out, we have to get the line moving. How do we do that? Well, we bring our arm back up. Well, <laughs> I watch a lot of people bring it back up. It's kind of look like a lame duck flying out there. I mean, they get real ginger about that. Now, I see this a lot on beginners, and they get it up like this, and they go like that, and you hear that snap. They really got that forward cast. But what we're going to do is what we call a back cast. We all know that. We've all had the basic lessons, back cast. But I prefer to call it acceleration. We want to get it moving. Some of you need to get the line moving. You got to get it accelerated. And some of the, the keys to a good forward cast start with a good back cast. A good back cast, good acceleration. Get it moving, get some authority. Don't be afraid of that rod. A nice grip on the rod, a good acceleration. I sometimes wonder if there is, is there a point where you have too much acceleration? Don't often see that. Okay, now we start to accelerate, we have another problem. I see this from a lot of people. Boy, they really want to, they're just making the rod go back and forth. And you know these graphite rods are so good. They make so much line speed that if you get the line waving up and down, eventually you'll get it out. The problem with that is we have a fly on the end with the hook. And eventually it never catches up to the line and snap, it either comes off, it either catches your friend behind you, your, your own ear, or you lose it. What do we got to do to stop that? We got to develop a stroke. Hey, yes. You heard it was a cast? No, it's a casting stroke. Yeah. Think of it that way. Stroke, like a tennis stroke, golf stroke. You know, there's a lot of this casting is like golf. And if you've played golf before, some of the same 
teaching techniques we're going to use here. Okay, so let's start off. Let's start off right now with a short stroke. A short stroke. Why? We want to make a short cast. Right now I have enough line out to probably catch most of the fish uh, that you'll encounter. 25 foot of line. Okay, so what we want to do is bring this stroke up. Okay, now the stroke, if we were in a clock, and we hear a lot about that, and I know you've been, you had your basic lesson, you heard the 10 to 2, river runs through it, the guy said it's a four beat count and all that. But let's really get reality here. What we want this rod to do is flex. Oh yeah, you remember the action? It's got to flex. Yeah, it's got the flex. We've got to hold on to the hold on to the real seat here. And you can see what the rod does. You can feel the energy go up your arm into it. Feel that energy in that rod. Feel it. Visualize it. The Xenophy casting is coming on here. Well, now into our exercise. I call it casting exercise. And something that I've worked out over the years of teaching casting for a long time. Would you believe 50 years of I do believe casting. it. Not teaching it, but 45 years of teaching it, 50 plus years of casting. I think that things like sports need to be taught in sections. And so the first section that you worked on was the casting stroke. You know, getting a good casting stroke so you don't have, you know, you did such a great job of teaching it. Now we're going to hammer that into the people by practice, 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 which Andy said. Exactly. So here we go. What we're going to do is tuck this arm, tighten it up, and do what we call a short, accurate cast. But what we're going to do is start feeling the rod tip. As we pull down on it, we feel the rod tip unfold. And we just, we practice not going back as far, doing everything that you showed us in that first stroke. And we do it over and over again, but, but we don't do it too long. I think you mentioned, what, 15 minutes, all you want to really practice? That, that's a good amount of time if you can set aside that per day to really, to really hone your skills. Yeah, I think if you get too much, you can also put in bad habits too. Absolutely. <laughs> but so what we're going to do is work on this, going up and down and practicing. And what you're developing is something you said uh, earlier, rhythm, right? Uh, the rhythm of a cast. And it comes into play when we talk about that false cast, developing a rhythm. And you do this. Now, if you were in San Francisco and you ran out to the Golden Gate Casting Club, you'd see 50 guys out there before they go into casting competition for 20 minutes doing this, going up and down, following that rod right on it. You know what they're going to do, Micah? What's that? They're going to put a target out there. Let me run this out there for you. Thank you, sir. That'll give you a good target. Now, no notice I'm just going back and forth shortening that stroke using the thumb, there we go, until I'll do that until I can hit it like in 10 casts, boom. You want to try that? Sure, you bet. Because I've watched you do this before. <laughs> Boo, look at that. Now look what happens if you break your wrist. I want you to break your wrist. Whoa, what, the loop's gone, the, the line's hitting, now, I want you to tighten that up, do that stroke just right. And what you want to do is not get to the habit, folks out there, of going like that and trying to force that down to come here. What you want to do is lock that wrist and accurate. Look at that. Look at the difference. He's hitting it every time. So what do you think of this? That, you, you can just pay me some money now or, or later for this nice, great tip. I'll get you later, Jack. Oh, okay. You know, the next exercise we're going to do is feeling the cast. You know, uh, you're from Asia, right? You were born in Asia? Yep, I was born in Vietnam, Jack. But you but you learned to fly fish here. I sure did. Where you live. But you heard of Zen over there, didn't you? It's about mastery. It's about mastery. But this is about feeling your way rather than visual. The samurai uh, swordsmen did it closing their eyes. They could do everything automatic. So what we're going to do is learn to feel the cast. We're going to learn to hold the rod up Feel the strokes. Feel the line go and the energy. Now, I grab this rod. I'm going to show you how you do this. Okay. Now, right here, this energy is going to go through this rod. And you're going to feel this energy all the way to the tip. And you know, you had a great tip about you know, keeping your rod in. And this is a great place to bring out the bandana. But we're going to show you another way to feel it because you need to feel that butt move. And that's a hard thing for people to understand is this butt has to flex. And the only way this butt flexes, 
So the energy goes as if you come to a stop. Mm -hmm. So you put your two fingers right there. Now we're going to bring that up and come to a stop. Okay, with, with authority, just like you're making a cat. Okay. Now the first thing is you're going to close your eyes because you're going to concentrate and have that zen work for you. We're going we're gonna to concentrate on feeling the energy flow up to the tip of the rod. Very good. Feel it again. Come to a stop. Now, you know when you feel that energy go into the tip, what do you want to do? You want to change direction. That's right. So let's, let's, go ahead and, let's go ahead and do that. So when you feel that energy hit the tip, your line is going to be parallel to the ground. Teaching you rhythm, it's teaching you timing. Again, stop. Come up to and come and stop. Now, I don't want you to stop. I want you just to wave the rod. Okay. Just like a lot of your students do when they first start. What do you feel? Not much. Do you feel any energy going anywhere? You really don't. So this is a way to feel your back cast. What you need is to be out there, close your eyes, come to a stop, just till you feel that stop and that flex of the rod. What that flex is going to do is throw that line behind us. And then as you come forward, this can play into effect because you can try different places. If you put the energy in too quick, you're going to feel the energy go up the rod and stop. Do it, try that. See, look at it. Just feel how it just stopped right in the middle of the rod. Sure did. Now let's make a full cast where you're adding more power. What, what you're trying to do is get that wump that we were talking about, adding more energy towards lowering the cast. You got it. Whoa, look at that. I mean, for people who have never made a really good forward cast, this will like, let them know how it feels. Let's try it again. Add more power, lower in the cast. Look how that shoots out. Now add it and take a stop. You just try this, folks. Do different, different casts, and you'll feel where the energy is, and you'll really feel your way through. You don't even have to go to San Francisco or to Asia. You, you'll be able to get the zen of fly fishing right here, the zen of the cast. And this is the way that I teach it to feel. And it's a great exercise. It's actually two-part exercise, back cast and the forward cast that you beautifully showed us at the start. One of the other things, too, is you're breaking your wrist. You really feel that if you take that away now, close your eyes, and feel what happens when you break your wrist. You feel really nothing going through the rod. You're just using leverage. And you, you know, this rod, if you move it up and down like that, it'll still get line out. Exactly. But it won't get line out accurately or against any kind of breeze. It's really tough to feel. Tough to feel. So the feeling is, is what this is all about, this exercise. You know, with this accuracy cast, the other way is to get a little bit more distance and, and add a, one false cast in. And what I do is I just take a few more steps back, keep the same amount of line out, and then take a few steps back here. And then what we're going to do is we got this line out here. We're going to do a couple false casts and then try to hit the line with a little bit longer cast. Now, you know, we're, we're trying to actually combine it with the false cast. Now, and make a longer cast. And then you're still pulling down on that rod and doing the accuracy, but instead you're adding one false cast and doing the same thing, which leads you to shooting line. And that was Andy's deal, and I'm going to bring Andy in right now, and we're going to work on shooting line exercises.